God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we turn our attention to a topic that touches the very fabric of our society and the core of our Christian faith, the topic of marriage. Our text from Mark's Gospel presents us with Jesus teaching on this sacred institution, and through it, we are called to reflect on God's design for marriage and its profound significance in our lives. In our Gospel reading for today, we witness the Pharisees attempting to test Jesus with a question about divorce. But our Lord, in his infinite wisdom, redirects their focus to the original purpose and design of marriage. He takes them back to the beginning, to God's perfect creation before sin entered the world. Jesus declared, From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. These words remind us that marriage is not a human invention, nor a mere social construct. It is a divine institution established by God himself at the dawn of creation. The union of man and woman in marriage is a reflection of God's own nature, a unity in diversity, a communion of persons, a bond of love and faithfulness. However, we live in a fallen world where the beauty of God's design for marriage is often marred by human sin and selfishness. In our society today, we see numerous challenges to the sanctity of marriage, the rise of no-fault divorce, the normalization of cohabitation, and the redefinition of marriage in secular law all stand in stark contrast to God's original intent. Consider, for example, the prevalence of trial marriages or long-term cohabitation without commitment. Many couples today view living together as a way to test their compatibility before making a lifelong commitment. But this approach fundamentally misunderstands the nature of marriage as God designed it. Marriage is not meant to be a trial run or a conditional arrangement. It is a covenant, a sacred vow made before God and witnesses to love and to cherish one another for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. This is where we must confront the law in its, all of its severity. Our human attempts to redefine or circumvent God's design for marriage reveals the sinfulness in our hearts. We are prone to prioritize our own desires and conveniences over God's will. We seek escape clauses, and exit strategies, instead of embracing the lifelong commitment that marriage entails. In doing so, we not only sin against our spouses, but against God himself, who instituted marriage as a reflection of his own faithfulness. So the law of God condemns us in our failure to uphold the sanctity of marriage. It exposes our sinfulness and our selfishness, our lack of commitment, and our unwillingness to sacrifice for the sake of our spouse. It reveals our need for forgiveness and transformation. But thanks be to God, we are not left in our sin and failure. The gospel proclaims to us 
the good news of God's unfailing love and faithfulness most perfectly demonstrated in the person and work of Jesus Christ. I love what St. Paul writes in Ephesians. He wrote, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Christ's sacrificial love for his church is the model for Christian marriage. Just as Christ gave himself up for us, so husbands and wives are called to give themselves up for one another in selfless love. This is not a love based on feelings or personal benefit, but a committed, self-sacrificing love that reflects God's own faithfulness. The gospel assures us that even when we fail in our marriages, when we fall short of God's perfect standard, we have forgiveness and restoration in Christ Jesus. God's grace empowers us to forgive one another, to persevere through difficulties, and to grow in love and faithfulness. As Martin Luther beautifully expressed in his large catechism, marriage is not to be regarded as a matter of our choice, but as a divine ordinance to which we are bound in conscience. Now, this reminds us that marriage is not merely a personal preference or a social convention, but a calling from God. It is a vocation through which we serve God and our neighbor, and through which his love is made manifest in the world. Consider the blessing of children which Jesus emphasizes in our Gospel reading. It is another aspect of God's design for marriage. Our Lord says, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Children are a gift from God, entrusted to parents within the context of marriage. The family unit founded on marriage of one man and one woman, provides the ideal environment for nurturing and raising children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So as we contemplate the beauty and significance of Christian marriage, let us be encouraged by the words of the psalmist, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Now, this verse reminds us that a truly successful and blessed marriage is not achieved through our own efforts alone, but through the grace and guidance of God. It is God who joins together husband and wife. It is God who sustains them through the joys and challenges of married life. So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we contemplate the mystery of marriage, we are led to an even greater mystery, the union between Christ and his bride, the church. This profound truth illuminates the depth and significance of God's design for marriage. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, draws a beautiful parallel. He wrote, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. Just as husband and wife become one flesh in marriage, so too has Christ united himself with his church in an inseparable bond 
through his incarnation, Jesus, the eternal Son of God, took on human flesh. In his life, death, and resurrection, he has joined himself to us in a union so intimate that the church is called his body and his bride. The divine marriage between Christ and the church is consummated in the Holy Supper, where our Lord gives us his very body and blood. As we partake in this sacred meal, we are united with Christ in a mystical yet real way, becoming one flesh with him. St. Paul actually affirms this in his first letter to the Corinthians. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. This union with Christ is the source and model for all Christian marriages. Just as Christ gave himself fully for his bride, the church, so husbands are called to give themselves fully to their wives. And just as the church submits to Christ in love, so wives are called to submit to their husbands. But let us be clear, this submission is not about domination or inequality. Rather, it's about order, love, and mutual service within the marriage relationship. Both husband and wife submit to Christ, and in doing so, they submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. The one flesh union that God establishes in marriage is a reflection of the union he desires with all humanity through Jesus Christ. It points us to the ultimate wedding feast, as described in the book of Revelation. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. This, dear Christian friends, is our hope and our destiny. To be eternally united with Christ in perfect love and joy. Every Christian marriage is called to be a living testimony to this greater reality, a signpost of pointing to the ultimate union between Christ and his church. So dear Christian friends, whether you are married, single, widowed, or divorced, this message has implications for all of us. To those who are married, it calls you to renew your commitment to your spouse and to strive to reflect God's faithfulness in your relationship. For those who are single, it encourages you to honor God's design for marriage in your life and relationships. For all of us as a church community, it challenges us to uphold and support the institution of marriage, to be a witness to a world of God's loving design. May the Holy Spirit work in our hearts, enabling us to honor marriage as God intended, to forgive and love as Christ has loved us, and to find in our earthly relationships a foretaste of the eternal communion we will enjoy with our heavenly bridegroom. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.